Street. Just face down here. Alright. And just okay. walk straight. Is there such a thing as mind control? Can we just download an app from the app store and use it to control someone else's mind? Could you really use your phone to control someone else just like in a video game? And how would such a thing even work? Is it even possible? The answer to all these questions is yes. And today I'm going to show you how. So stick around. I'm going to show you how to build a 21st century mind control device. You'll be able to use your mobile phone to control your friends and your family. First, a little bit of background. According to Wikipedia, the vestibular system is a sensory system that provides the leading contribution to a sense of balance and spatial orientation. Its purpose is to coordinate movement with balance and it's part of our inner ear. The primary role of the vestibular nerve is to transform vestibular information related to balance into a frame of reference based on the position of our head in relation to our body. Our brain uses this information from the vestibular system to enable us to understand our body's dynamics and kinematics from moment to moment. If we could control the signals sent via the vestibular nerve, we can control one's sense of balance and even motion. A known way of controlling the vestibular system is via a method known as galvanic vestibular stimulation. According to Wikipedia, Galvanic Vestibular Stimulation, or GVS for short, is the process of sending specific electric messages to a nerve in the inner ear that maintains our balance. According to a 2005 article in NBC News, a patient who underwent a GVS procedure was quoted as saying, The phenomenon is painless but dramatic. Your feet start to move before you know it. I could even remote control myself taking the switch into my own hands. Galvanic vestibular stimulation involves sending a small current to the galvanic nerve behind the ear. This small amount of current stimulates the nerve and makes the brain believe that the head and the body are in a different position than they really are. By applying a positive voltage, we can make the person believe that they are tilted to the right. And by reversing the voltage, the feeling of tilting in the opposite direction will become prevalent. By controlling the polarity and value of this voltage, we can then control a person's sense of balance. Cool, huh? The earliest mention of galvanic vestibular stimulation I could find on YouTube was work by the Japanese telephone company Nippon Telephone and Telegraph back in 2007. Here they are using a hobby RC remote to control a person walking. I have no idea why a telephone company was experimenting with GVS, but it's still pretty cool nonetheless. In 2009, a YouTuber by the name of Paul Lee posted an experimental GVS device that he had constructed on a breadboard. The device required a wired connection to the subject, but it looks like it worked pretty well. In 2016, Alan Pan built a mind control helmet that used galvanic vestibular stimulation. His device utilized a small RC toy remote control. And finally, in 2017, Spectrum Builds posted a small GVS circuit to YouTube. Check it out. The current DIY solutions are either wired or use older RC style remote controllers and DIY electrodes. Therefore, they have some issues such as range and sensitivity limitations. So let's bring mind control into the 21st century with a solution that makes use of a modern mobile application, 802.11 Wi-Fi networking, and safety features to limit the maximum current. Finally, this project is for informational purposes only. Putting a current through your body, especially the head, can be dangerous. So please don't try this at home. 
Now it's time to put together a block diagram of the major components. First, we have our subject that we wish to control. The next component we need is a mobile application that will give us a nice interface we can use to control the person. We then need to make a Wi-Fi connection and we connect to the actual control hardware that will then take the instructions across the network and translate them into electrical signals which then stimulate the vestibular system in the proper manner. This will allow us to control the movements of the subject. Easy! Alright, let's take a look at the control hardware requirements. There are some commercial devices that can output about 5 milliamps. However, for safety reasons, I'm going to limit the current across the electrodes to be about 3 milliamps maximum. We want the hardware to be inexpensive and built from readily available components. We also need Wi-Fi support. And finally, the hardware should be portable, self-contained, and run off of batteries for several hours. This is the circuit that I designed to meet the requirements. It utilizes an ESP8266 chip to provide the Wi-Fi and translate the incoming instructions from the mobile phone application. Using GPIO0 and GPIO2, it then feeds the input of the transistor H-bridge circuit, which are labeled A and B. The BJT H-bridge circuit then drives the output electrodes connected to E1 and E2. The transistors Q1 and Q2, along with the 220 ohm resistor R3, limit the maximum output current to about 3 milliamps, regardless of the electrical resistance across E1 and E2. Meaning, you can power the circuit with between 12 to 18 volts on pin 1, and the circuit will always provide a consistent, constant current across the electrodes. All the circuit diagrams, files, and code can be found in the GitHub link in the description below. Just an FYI, I ran some circuit simulations in SPICE that show the current across electrodes is limited to a maximum of around 3 milliamps, regardless of how high the input voltage is. I definitely recommend using at least 12 volts input Otherwise, you might end up not having enough current flow if your skin resistance is a bit too high. The following table lists all the components that you need, which include a handful of bipolar junction transistors and resistors. I've also created a PCB, which you can order from PCBWay if you prefer to have a professional looking circuit board. Again, all the necessary files will be linked in the description below. Now, let's build the hardware. And we're gonna put everything all together now through a little bit of YouTube magic. Now it's time to start writing the code that will power the server running on the ESP8266 SOC. We will be using the Arduino libraries for this to make things easier. We also need to write the mobile app that will run on your phone and communicate with the server. More on this later. The server is written using the Arduino libraries and runs on the ESP8266. It waits for a connection from the mobile app and then translates the instructions from the mobile app to electrical impulses that are fed to the electrodes. Now it's time to write the code for the mobile app. I chose to use GDScript and the Godot game engine. Wow, that was really quick. And thanks to the Godot game engine, the mobile app is now done. Let's take a look at it. And here's the app running on my Android phone. First, you'll need to connect to the access point on the control hardware. The access point's name is called Mind Control AP, and you can see here, I've already connected. Notice the red status indicator in the top right corner. That means we are not connected to the actual network server. The next step is to connect to the network server that we wrote. Do this by hitting the connect button. 
The status indicator has turned green and that lets us know that we are now connected. So let's go over a few features of the app. First is the adjustable power levels. You can manually change the level with 100 representing the maximum current of 3 milliamps all the way down to a 10%. The power level is controlled via pulse width modulation on the server. Off to the middle, we have a debug window which can dump the commands that are being sent or even the raw UDP packets if you so desire. And finally, off to the right, we have the joystick control and this is where the magic happens. Now for some footage of the device in use. Sorry, we lost the audio for this next part, but I'm gonna go ahead and narrate it. So here I am putting the device into my pocket. We put it into a little project box and those are the gel electrodes that I got off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. I'm attaching them to the back of my ears near the vestibular nerve and my wife's manning the camera and here we go. So I think she got a little crazy here and started going full force, pushing me to the right, then left, back to the right. Here she pushes me to the left again, but I actually made it all the way to the end of the garden. So we're gonna give it another go. I think she's uh, determined to knock me over, start walking back. Now this time the controls are reversed because I'm headed towards the camera. She gives it full power there, doesn't knock me over. She wants to try again, and here she, <laughs> almost knocks me over and she had a lot of fun with that. So in this series of clips I'm trying to balance on one leg while my wife's trying to knock me over and there you can see she just went went for it. Here she goes again moving trying to knock me over. I'm trying to maintain my balance and she manages to actually get me to the ground. Try it one more time and here she goes a little crazy with the joystick going back and forth. Finally can't take it anymore, I lose my balance. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like and subscribe, and I'll have a new video in a few weeks.